breaking news. Welcome to today's headlines. Real reason Nigeria cannot properly levy criminal prosecution against Kanu Ejimako. Real reason Nigeria cannot properly levy criminal prosecution against Kanu Ejimako. To my dear listeners from wherever you're listening from, stay tuned as I read to this news. Aloy Ejimako, special counsel for the detent leader of the proscribed indigenous people of Biafra, Hypob, Unamdi Kanu on Monday said that Nigeria cannot properly levy its sovereign right of criminal prosecution against his client because the federal government has not explained what it meant by Kanu was intercepted in a foreign country. In a press release obtained by Politics Nigeria, Ejimako insisted that Nigeria must first explain to her domestic court and international community, particularly Britain, how Kano ended up in the country in chains. The lengthy statement was titled, Absence of lawful extradition is the reason why Nigeria cannot explain how it intercepted Unam de Kano. Kano. 54 was born at Afara Uku, Abia State. He had earlier jumped bail in June 2018 before leaving for the United Kingdom, UK, his second home, though he said that he fled because his life was no longer safe in Nigeria. After about 30 years abroad, the Antony General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Abubakar Malami, signed at a press briefing in Abuja on June 29, 2021, announced that the IPOB leader was re-arrested in a foreign country and extradited to Nigeria. His lawyers had said the IPOB leader was abducted in Kenya and wished to Nigeria. Upon his re-arrest and extradition in June 2021, he was rearranged before Justice Beta Unyako for terrorism-related charges and has since been remanded in the Department of State Services, TSS custody in Abuja. He has since been brought to court several times since last June with his matter stalled. The case was adjourned to February 16 for trial. Following the sudden appearance of Mazi Unamdekanu in a federal high court in Abuja on 29th June 2021, the Antony General of Nigeria, Abubakar Malami San, at a press conference on the same date, stated that Kano was intercepted through the collaborative effort of Nigerian intelligence and security services. He added that recent steps taken by the federal government saw the interception of the fugitive Kano on Sunday, the 27th day of June, 2021. Beyond this bland use of the word interception, neither the Antony General nor any other Nigerian official has explained how and where this infamous interception occurred or whether it occurred under the pertinent legal framework or not. From published accounts, all efforts by the media 
domestic and international to elicit details of this interception have met a stubborn official silence. And it appeared that the same is true with myriad diplomatic inquiries. Issuing to Nigeria from the international community, notably from the United Kingdom and United Nations. Conversely, Unamdi Kanu had, in various sworn statements, given credible accounts and details that prove that the so called interception is simply that he was officially kidnapped disappeared, tortured in Kenya and extraordinarily renditioned to Nigeria. During the hearing of Kano's fundamental rights suit in Abia State, which he won, the Nigerian government could not explain how Kano ended up in Nigeria, thus confirming that Kano was not extradited but illegally renditioned. If Kano was extradited, the Nigerian government would have been very forthright with it, especially given the insurmountable prosecutorial barrier that comes with extraordinary rendition. It is therefore instructive that, to date, the Nigerian government has neither in court or public contradicted Kano's account nor offered any alternative account that may suggest that Kano's return to Nigeria was secured through some due process of law. On its part, the Kenyan government has, in the public and in processes filed in court, vehemently denied that Kano was subjected to any extradition or even deportation proceedings in Kenya, and Nigeria has dead panned to Kenya's several denials. In view of the foregoing, there are several questions and answers. Well meaning Nigerians and the international community must demand from Nigeria. These questions and answers are very crucial because under the domestic and international legal court, Nigeria cannot properly levy its sovereign right of criminal prosecution against Kano without first proving that the act of transferring Kano from Kenya to Nigeria conformed to the basic tenet of the law, municipal and international including particularly treaties to which Nigeria is subject. Finally, to my dear listeners, now we've come to the end of our today's news. Please do drop by at the comment section and let us know what your view is all about. Thank you for listening.